This is the second video on abnormal uterine bleeding. As a recap, we have different types of abnormal bleeding, namely heavy menstrual bleeding, intermenstrual bleeding, postcoital bleeding, postmenopausal bleeding, and amenorrhea. In this video, I'm going to be talking about IMB, PCB, and PMB for short. So starting off with intermenstrual bleeding, so IMB essentially refers to bleeding outside of a woman's periods. Now, there are a number of causes, and we're going to classify these according to their anatomical site. So we've got the ovarian, uterine, cervical, and vaginal causes. So starting off with the ovarian, so here we've got ovulation, because 1-2% to 2 of women will have spotting. Next, we've got the uterine causes, so we have iatrogenic causes, mainly referring to hormonal contraceptives, because these can result in irregular bleeding. This can be due to the medication itself, so for example because of a missed pill, or because of interactions with other drugs. Then we've got infective causes, such as endometritis. We've got structural benign causes, such as endometrial polyps, fibroids, and adenomyosis. Then we've got structural malignant causes, and here we're referring to endometrial cancer. Okay, so next we've got the cervical causes. So iatrogenic this time is referring to spotting noted after an examination or after a smear test. We have infective causes again, such as cervicitis. Then we've got the structural benign causes, where we have a cervical ectropion, and cervical polyps. So before we move on from here, what is a cervical ectropion? So let's have a quick recap on the histology of the cervix. As we can see clearly from this image, the endocervix is lined by columnar epithelium, while the ectocervix is lined by squamous epithelium, and where these meet is called the squamocolumnar junction. Now during pregnancy and puberty, the high levels of estrogen cause the cervix to grow and the columnar epithelium to be exposed. This is visible as a red area around the os on the surface of the cervix, which is our cervical ectropion, as you can see in the picture. This epithelium is more prone to bleed, so these patients may present with intermenstrual bleeding. Good. So next we have the structural malignant causes, such as cervical cancer. Now, moving on to the vaginal causes, so here we have infective causes such as vaginitis and structural malignant causes such as vaginal cancer. Great, so those are all the causes of IMB. So if a patient presents to us with IMB, these are the things we should be thinking about. We need to take a good history and examination, looking out for any of these causes. Then we can take some tests directed at what we are suspecting. So we might need to take swabs if we're thinking of an infective cause. We might want to perform a transvaginal ultrasound if we're suspecting a structural cause. Then, if we're thinking about a malignant cause, we can do a smear test and obtain an endometrial biopsy. Good, so that's it really about IMB. So back to our main page. So next, we're going to discuss postcoital bleeding. Okay, so postcoital bleeding, or PCB for short, refers to bleeding after sexual intercourse. When a patient presents to us with PCB, alarm bells should ring in our minds and think about cervical cancer. Other causes then include cervical or vaginal trauma, cervicitis or vaginitis, and a cervical polyp. So essentially PCB is most of the time referring to a cervical pathology. Therefore, it's very important that we take a smear test in all of these patients. Great, so that's all you need to know about PCB. Next, we're going to talk about postmenopausal bleeding. So basically, PMB refers to bleeding occurring at least 12 months, so one year, after the last menstrual period. So basically, we're referring to bleeding occurring after the menopause, which is when a woman has not seen any periods for one year. So again, alarm bells should be ringing in our minds when a patient presents with PMB. 
and this time we should be thinking about endometrial cancer. Other causes of PMB, however, include endometrial hyperplasia, polyps, fibroids, atrophic vaginitis, and ovarian and vaginal cancer. So since we're thinking about endometrial cancer, all of these patients need a transvaginal ultrasound. And here we are looking at the endometrial thickness. If this is more than 4 mm on the ultrasound, we need to obtain an endometrial sample, either in an outpatient setting via PIPEL or else under general anesthetic during a hysteroscopy DNC. If you'd like further information on endometrial cancer, you can look at my video Uterine Pathologies 2, which I will link in the description below. So that's about it. So that's all you need to know about IMB, PCB and PMB. I hope that this video was helpful. In my next video, I will discuss amenorrhea. Thank you.